Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's video I'll be looking back at one of my oldest creations and I'll be talking about where this thing is going right now. A few years back I made this very simple CNC machine which was made um, to put ink on paper or on PCB boards and then put them in an etchant and uh, basically have the copper etched away where there's no ink. It was very simple. It was just made of a piece of MDF with some wood stuck on it, um, an old fan, two old steppers from uh, old printers. No, I think there were there were five five and a quarter inch uh, floppy disk drives. Um, there's some uh, brass tubing here. Um, there's some fishing line. All in all, it was nothing special, and it worked really great. In fact, it still works now. I could just plug it in, and it would work right out of the box. Now. I've done a few other things uh, in the meantime, obviously, and let's put this aside for now and focus on where it's supposed to go. In the past, when I designed my first and second 3D printer, I found out that um, rigid designs are very essential for getting a good result. Uh, this here's my, these are parts from my last 3D printer and uh, they're basically all based on the same profile and they're lined up by using uh, threaded rods and those threaded rods are pushed through them and then they're tightened together with nuts and it makes for a very, very strong design. And the whole printer that I built, which actually looks like something like this, um, lives from the design where it has one stable uh, back, I call it the spine, and everything else is just clamped to that. So it's held together very strongly and therefore most of the di most of the weight is centered, and movement doesn't really affect it that much. Now I want to take this one step further, and I'm going to build this here. This is going to be the base for a new plotter or a 3D printer. It could be both, um, and this is going to be based on threaded rods um, and. Uh, stainless steel rods uh, for linear bearings. It's going to be a lot more complicated than my first printer, but I suppose it will still be reasonably cheap and it will be very easy to replicate. Because you can either 3D print these parts or you can make makeshift parts uh, from wood or any other material. Now I'm starting out with the motor mount, and I've already done this. Um, it's got the stepper. Um, it's two identical pieces holding the stepper in place. And uh, the stepper is going to have a uh, standard... Um, what is it called? A uh, belt drive whatever, um, one of these pieces here. And around it is going to go a rigid structure that is held together by threaded rods, once again. And everything here uh, will then lead to a another piece of threaded rods. Um, there's going to be a bearing uh, against the stepper. Uh, there's some uh, bearings up here that the uh, belt will go through. There's my belt. So the belt will be wound around the motor. 
and will actually traverse right under the table so there will only be one piece of belt under the table and it will be um, tightened by the by the form of the table uh, which should be simple enough and it should be easy um, to keep tightened and uh, at the end of this we're going to have the um, z-axis stepper or the y-axis stepper um, depending on if it's supposed to be a 3d printer or a plotter and um, held together uh, holding it together uh, will be two of these pieces which will be the x-axis and they also just slide in here And in the end, everything will be held together um, simply by, by nuts. Um, uh, quite a lot of uh, nuts. So I'm actually thinking of calling uh, this plotter base uh, the squirrel because it's going to be full of nuts on the inside. Um, there are linear bearings um, on the stainless steel rods. Um, the table will be across here. I don't have anything to actually simulate this right now. Ah, yes it is. So this will be held here like this. And it will be uh, propelled by the belt and the stepper um, to the front and back. And uh, because of the form and because of the way everything is held together, this is going to be very sturdy. Um, so I can actually put a uh, y-axis gantry on top of here, um, and that y-axis gantry can put a lot of force um, onto the table. So I could actually use this maybe even for, for simple milling purposes and so on. or in case of a uh, 3D printer base, um, this could be uh, accelerated very fast and uh, you could work with a 3D printer extruder um, at very low heights with, without having any wobble or vibrations. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take to get this finished. I do have uh, a number of other projects running right now. Um, but I want to put some time into this uh, because I think that the uh, that the direct ink to PCB project needs a little bit of uh, input and I've seen some very interesting uh, developments where people coat the the PCB and then uh, basically scratch away small lines into it as if they were doing isolation milling and they're putting that into the etchant and uh, the results look very promising and I want to make something like that too. Um, so this is a good reason to make a, uh, a uh, CNC table like this one. And uh, in the end we'll see what it's good for and we'll see what happens to it. Um, this is my update for now. Um, I will be uh, taping a lot of the progress on this and uh, I'll be publishing the code and all the design everything is going to go on github when it's done but it's pretty complicated for example um, these parts here um, where is it that now looks like this um, it actually took me I think it is four iterations to get here because uh, the first iteration had the wrong diameter of hole. The second iteration um, had a uh, closed hole, which is not very good if you want to put this thing uh, on the rod um, without having to take everything apart again. And um, so I'm doing this one step at a time and uh, in the end I think it's going to be really great. I also spent some time designing 
a uh, something to scratch the surface with um, for doing uh, the simple scratching method. Uh, this is a piece of uh, steel rod, and uh, I I machined a uh, a tip on that and something to fix it between two linear bearings so it doesn't actually have any movement and it doesn't get any vibration and uh, I, will, I will be trying to work with this um, for the first step and uh, when I'm done you're gonna see so thanks for now thanks for watching and bye bye